Hello, today we're going to be talking about my ultimate percussion library. Uh, I absolutely love this. It's quite an old product, actually. It's one of uh, uh, Spitfire's older ones called Percussion by Joby Bergs. And it's my go-to for any percussion. I use this uh, over anything in the BBC Symphony Orchestra. It's simple. It's got quite an old UI um, but it's timeless. The mic positions are gorgeous. It's everything I feel you'll ever really need. Um, Percussion-wise, you can build it up uh, into epic drums. You can uh, windle it down to intimate bongos. Uh, you have a beautiful marimba, celeste, glockenspiel, uh, desk bells. As I said, it's really your all to go to for any sort of percussion instrument uh, you really need for your project um, which you would hope so for the price tag on it um, 349 pounds dollars or euros it's not cheap um, as i always say get it on sale currently it's 50 percent off for students and educators so get it while it lasts if you can i remember when i got it i think i got it for uh, like 40 percent off i can't remember but i never look back um, because uh, as you'll hear, it's a gorgeous and timeless library and nothing quite compares to it. Um, and so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing if they actually develop this into one of their own plugins. Then again, I quite like it within Contact Player. Yes, this isn't one of their own. You have to download uh, the free version of Contact Player. I think you just click here and that'll do it for you on their website. It's very simple. So there's 50 different instruments, three different mic positions, uh, and I said it's it is an older um, UI as you can see there um, but let's stop looking at the website and actually look at what you get oh quickly you will need uh, 28 gigabytes uh, of space or I guess they say to have 57 uh, required for the actual installment but it only takes up about 29 gigabytes uh, yeah, 43,109 samples altogether. Um, gorgeous. So let's uh, go over and actually have a tinker. I've already loaded the first patch, so this is what you'll see. Um, you can see right here we have, uh, I guess, all there tuned and they have actual um, collections. So the drums high, drums low, toys. And then if you really want to go into the individual instruments and techniques, there's the individual instrument section. So if you want to go into the drums high, and truly explore all the techniques that come with each instrument. Uh, you can do that as well over here, or the same with the toys. You can really go into uh, a bit more detail with that and the metal. So instantly I've already loaded the drums high patch. We can see over here in the left hand side that we have our different mic positions close. Uh, I wiggle that, decatry and ambient mic over here. Uh, everything kind of becomes preloaded with the decatry. Uh, you can see that not all um, of the details on each instrument are loaded. You can see if we actually click on each instrument, uh, you can see what is loaded and where that sample specifically is as well as the ones that aren't loaded that we can add simply by clicking on it because you can see it's turned off over here and then dragging it and you'll see on the bottom it's moving around so you can add some that aren't preloaded but I do really like these drum high and drum low patches um, and really you can just go in and just smash the keys and see what happens which is exactly what I'm going to do so you can get a sense of the room and uh, the intuition behind how they really set this up. So in this, we specifically have our snares, uh, our timbales, I'm going to butcher names, I'm great at butchering names, uh, congos and bongos, is that just congos? Yeah, it's congos, and uh, rata, rata toms. <laughs> Anyone who's seen any of my videos knows I am great at butchering names, so I hope that does not trigger anybody. We do have bongos though, they're over here. So let's have a play. So you really get a sense. of the room. 
There's our snares down here. You really get a sense of that room. It's quite a big room. But if you want to bring it close, I'm going to put in a little bit of decoratory as well. You'll hear this goes straight into your face, one extreme to the other. And so you really get a sense and you could of just how close that is, how distant that is, and you can mix accordingly. If you want a more closer, intimate sound. Or if you really want to go the full distance, let's just turn all these other ones off. You really don't need reverb at all with this, which is something I absolutely love about it because you have that natural room sound and you can go from that extreme to this extreme. And that quality and that sound, simply with three mic positions, there's so much you can do, they're so unique. Um, they do have rolls. Uh, let's actually have a look. Uh, let's do some bongo rolls. We all have a bit of bongo rolls. Hand roll stop. Let's turn those on and drag them onto the scene. Uh, right down here. And what's nice if you get your dynamic fader. You can really control it, drag it in, drag it out, and of course do something similar with the mic positions. Maybe you want it just a little bit further away. You can do that. It's there. It's great. And you can do that with most of the other ones. You have different swells. Uh, different ways of hitting it. You could just see there how much you're actually getting and we're not even you know we're only just scratching the surface of this product now let's go into one of my favorite patches the drums low we'll click on that i love this one because it's got all your your bass drum uh your field drum and your toms with both the um it's like a toms ensemble and the individual drums itself you have a gong drum as well and similarly we have these different mic positions as well what i love about the double bass i'm just going to click on that the rolls are drop dead gorgeous so i'm going to quickly just turn those on because i don't know why they did not turn them on initially because they're great and i'm going to put it up with the rest of them um because just just listen to this um don't forget your dynamic fader. It sounds so epic. <laughs> I love it. I love the rolls. Um, the rolls are absolutely gorgeous and I should really stick that there. There we go. And the dynamic fader does so much. You do have swells as well and effect rubs, which are great, but... Multiple dynamic layers, great rolls, and of course swells if you want to control that. That's just the double bass. We have our toms, toms ensemble. The 
which are fun to play with, field drum, And you do actually have something similar. You can actually change the way you play them. You can have the snare on or off at the moment. Let's turn it off. And turn it on. And what else can we do? There are rolls as well. So if we turn those rolls on, I think there's rolls for just about everything. Let's put them there. And again, something similar. Beautiful roll, and with our snare off. And of course, with the mic positions as well, let's just listen to the close. And our ambient as well, which I think is very effective with the double bass. really a sense of that space and so you can see there's so much you can do oh gong drum as well that's always fun to add for effect and that too has swells effects drags which these can sound really nice actually if we uh, drag those as you can see there's a lot of them we're gonna have to drag them like down here because there are so many of them there we go and what you're seeing in red here is key switches I believe So different effects, and there's lots of those as well, and there's effects variations, there's a lot really to mess with. And as well, you can change the actual uh, stick you beat it with. There's just a stick, there's a wooden one as well. Uh, similar with the snares, you can turn them on and off, and you'll notice this with different instruments, so it's always worth looking and seeing what you can do because there is so much you can do with a lot of these instruments and uh, you can affect the release the very there's variation as well um, it's a quite an encompassing patch and they have this beautiful presets as well uh, toys these are actually quite fun if we go into these um, And of course, you can click on each instrument, and there are, as I said, rolls for everything, swells, uh, and so don't worry about not having your rolls if if that's what you're looking for. Uh, everything just about has a roll. Um, but here we have what I think just about every toy you could really wish for in the uh, percussion sort of library. And what's amazing about this as well is the mic positions. You really get a sense, and I can't rave enough about the mic positions in this library. Some libraries, you really can't tell too much of a difference and the quality can vary but the actual room and the mixes within these positions just within three of them it's outstanding uh, my hat really does go off to them uh, for that quality and you really get a sense of that when we actually now move into the tuned instruments um, so that's all the toys that's the drums that's the percussion -y, ha hitty drummy stuff and there is the unpitched metal and wood at the end which we'll go through um, but I want to now kind of focus on the instruments and we'll fly through these a bit because um, there's not much to them uh, as it were but they are what they say on the tin now you see right at the bottom of contact we have these key switches this swaps between the different articulations uh, sets if that's what you want so when you're actually composing or writing something and you want to switch between normal express or tight 
uh, click those switches within your MIDI and it will swap between them for you if you want to do it in the middle of a piece. But let's have a little play and then we'll go between the mic positions as well so we get a sense uh, for truly their beauty. Very music boxy. And of course, that's just the normal one. Here's our expressive patch. Or even maybe something a little bit more. Dreamy. <laughs> uh, tight. These are a little less resonant. Now, I don't know exactly how many round robins there are, but I think you can tell by the quality of them how what's really going on. So let's try a different mic position. Let's go close, just so you can get a feel for this. I love the panning on this one. I feel like my head's crammed right in that. <laughs> uh, inside of the celeste itself it's such a gorgeous every mic position to me is just like whoa it's it just and there's your distance uh if we do a little mix And so there you are, you really are getting a sense of this variation between close and far. You don't need a reverb, you can create such distance with that already. So that's the Celeste. Let's move on to our crot tails. I'm butchering that as usual. Have a quick tinker with this. Um, what's very intuitive about this as well is you'll notice, well, actually, you have the same keyboard, but two of them. Uh, and this can be quite intuitive, especially if you want it to sound like two are playing at once. Um... I don't know, I've, I'm not a percussionist myself, but I actually find the use of two really handy um, sometimes to create the effect of two actually being played, or I don't know how this is actually played in real life, but... Uh, if you want one hand doing chords, the other doing a melody, it's actually quite intuitive. Um, I don't know why it was done specifically, but I, I quite like it. Here's your close mic. It really is an art, these microphones. <laughs> and there's your dynamic layers. And it definitely sounds like there's quite a few round robins there. And let's move on. Desk bells. What I love actually doing with this one is tuning them down. Uh, 
Uh, if you tune them down an octave, it creates a really nice little effect. You know, 12 tones, and that's the beautiful thing of contact. You've got all the tuning and volume and panning up at the top as well. So don't forget, you can mess around with these a bit. Um, tune down, don't tune up, believe me. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it sounds awful when you tune something up. And there's your intimate close mic. And of course, an ambient mic. Nice far at the back. Uh, Glockenspiel, moving swiftly on, starting with our decatry again with the uh, exact same thing, high and low. But we can turn this off if we want. If you look in the options, you can just click uh, there and you can two-handed mapping. There you go. Just have one. If that's really throwing you off. Uh, I believe the same was for the Crotchals. I'm butchering that name. Close mic. Mind my awful playing, hopefully it really just shows how beautiful these instruments are. And of course we have more um, stuff to play with now as well. We have the muted. Which comparative to the normal. Uh, ring out a lot less which can help uh, get rid of some mud in your mix hard sticks and then our rolls uh, is it mission impossible I think it kind of starts off with a roll like that um, we've explored close, ambient, let's go back to normal. And then normal, and of course you can create your own mixes between these to really create the right space that you want for your piece. But I love, um, what I do a lot with these is create some very intimate pieces, uh, I feel like, um, especially like the remember, or marimba, it's my favorite instrument out of everything in this except maybe the bass drum but my favorite tuned instrument is definitely the the rimba in this patch because uh, it's uh, it could be used in so many contexts and you can create such beautiful mixes with it and of course we have our normals and rolls and now we go with our close mic So beautiful, I, I could play with this one all day. And you can create your own mixes, of course, but let's listen to the ambient mic just so we can hear. Hear the distance, our beautiful rolls.
Don't forget to use the dynamic fader for that. Very important. Uh, timpani. Again, with the two hand mapping, I believe. Yes, two hand mapping, which we can turn off, but can be very handy. We've got quite a few different selections for this. We have normal muted rolls, very important, different forms of swells, and muted rolls as well, which can be very handy. Uh, so. the sense of the room there beautiful release on that and of course decatry close mic i don't tend to use the close mic much if i want a little bit more of a sharpness to the sound i'll mix it in but mostly stick with the decatry muted just that little bit of a sharper, more, of course, muted sound. Rolls. Very important when it comes to timpani. M muted rolls. Swells. Don't have to do anything, does all the work for you. Um, but I don't tend to use these as much because I like timing mine, using the rolls and the dynamic fader. But beautiful sound, realistic sound, lots of layers, and everything you could ever really wish for within a timpani patch, if I'm honest. Tuba bells, these are another one that I like pitching down. Um, again, just quickly going back to the timpani, key switches, the red in the bottom, you'll see them on most patches. Uh, if you want to flick between each one, you can actually change them uh key switches where they actually are and drag that up or drag it down uh there we go to actually say where the key switches are if you want them more on the screen so normal and muted with the tuba bells again the two hand mapping muted if you don't want that less of a muddy sort of mix again i love doing this tuning them right down actually 24 is fun because you can get this really like haunted church bell sound i love that um but let's uh retune that up so we can actually hear what's going on so, muted, normal, that's the decatry, this is the close mic, nice and in your face, loses a lot of its um, size though, um, ambient mic, get a nice sense of its size there, and a nice tail end there as well. So that's all you're getting with that, again, what more do you want for your tuba bells? <laughs> Uh, vibraphone, let's swiftly move on. Normal, uh, motor, let's say sus, there we go, and rolls. Dynamic layers. Round robins, very obviously there. Uh, motor sus. Nice bit of vibrato there. Uh, 
and then rolls. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Cool. If that's what you want, let's go through our mic positions. Close, that nice, intimate, stick your face right into it sort of sound. Normal, sustains. That's a very different sound to the um, decatry, actually, a very different. Okay, I honestly, until right now, I have owned this for years, did not know this, and this is terrible of me because I love this library. The dynamic fader controls Hummer's vibrato is on that. You can get a really nice dry sustain sound. Okay, uh, we're learning together today. I'm glad I did this video. Wow. The detail on this. I'm still learning stuff about this product. If anything, that just kind of shows you how much stuff is here. <laughs> Wow, that's cool. Okay, ambient. Sense of that distance. The xylophone. Let's have a listen to you. Nice sense of space, you got that nice sound. Let's have a listen to our close mic. Again, I'm sticking my face right into it. But that's exactly what you want from a close mic. You want a close mic that you can actually use and mix in with everything, or even use by itself. I hate the ones where just that close mic just doesn't work. And I know for the drums it doesn't work as well, but it really does add that little bit of sharpness. But I like mics that work well on their own and I feel a lot of close mics you lose a lot of the body of the instrument well these have really maintained it uh, especially for some of these right metal so that's all you tuned instruments we're going to go again into a more let's just smack a keyboard and see what happens sort of thing um, but once again uh, you might notice sometimes it comes up blank in the mic positions that's because you need to actually click on something to activate them really and again here, soft, hard, brushed, you can change what sort of thing you're actually hitting these instruments with. Rolls, sweeps, um, rolls on high velocity. So if I'm just... Um, I guess that's with the ones that actually, probably the C's, so... Ah, uh, I would have thought that would have done it, I don't know. I don't know. You think high toggle whether a high velocity hit triggers a roll if available. Well, there you go. If you hit the right one, you're going to get a roll. <laughs> um, do I have to turn it on? I don't know. But you get sweeps, Super Bowl. Those are fun. Those create some really interesting effects for like ghostly stuff. Um, actually, let's play with one because I actually love these. Um, I mess around with them a lot. Um, right at the top. Is that a top D? Yes. You just kind of, kind of hear it. <sighs> There's some better ones out there. I know the timpani have some really fun ones. Um, but cymbals, yeah, as you can already hear, dynamic layers. There's lots going on there. Uh, and what's fun as well, like we can change that to a hard stick. 
Um, if we want maybe uh, more of a brushed sort of sound, let's go to G1. So soft, hard, or brushed. Which isn't working. Very odd. I don't know why it's not working. It is an older one. <laughs> These things happen. And um, rolls, swells, effects, effects bow. Okay, let's see what happens here. Let's put that all the way up to RE. I hope you can just about hear that. That's actually a really cool effect. So you can see you've got everything from your standard um, techniques, as I, we should call them, to your more extreme. You have the triangle, which is not actually selected. So let's select it and put it all the way up. So you have everything from anvils, from the dustbin, uh, from tam hits, rain sheet, uh, your classic mark tree. And this is just the, I guess, ensemble patch, as you would call it. Where it's all there, there's for, uh, different, of course, mic positions as well. Um, but what I, you can really do is actually go into the individual instruments and go into Unpitch Metal and truly explore these sounds. If I want to just load the triangle, because who doesn't want to, you can... Explore all the sound effects of the triangle, <laughs> if that's what you want to do. So you can, you can really see here, uh, they did not miss anything out. All the different effects, your classic mark tree as well. Long, up, down, push, sweep low, sweep mid, sweep high. Three different mic positions. Nice little stereo effect there. Sense of room there. Anvil. Again, with the mic positions, do I need to go through them again? Not really. Um, before we uh, really close this off, we should really look at our unpitched wood. Again, click on something. And you can see what we got. We can even change uh, what stick we're playing with here. Same here. And so you can really see how much work was actually put into this library. This is not a, a new eye library and it's one that I almost feel has been left behind and I don't want to say forgotten because uh, I guess for maybe some old timers they'll remember this and they still use it but it's my go-to percussion library I've never had to use anything else and anything that I have ever downloaded that has had per percussion sections on it like even BBC Symphony Orchestra I've been disappointed in um simply because the variation we have here I know with the Symphony Orchestra you've got 20 mic positions but what that does with 20, this one does better with three. Uh, I, I personally feel, 
And well, it is a specifically a percussion library. There is so much detail in it. Even in this, just the making of this video, I've learned things I probably should have learned a long time ago about this library. Um, but again, I tend to throw myself in and do a lot of work. So uh, I don't tend to kind of walk through uh, libraries as much, but in the creation of this video, I I've learned a lot, but I know it's a, it has a pretty price tag on it, but if you're looking for a percussion library and once you've got it, that's it. You don't need another percussion library. Uh, that's it. This is the one and go to. It's got all your percussion instruments. It has extended techniques. It's got your normal techniques. It's got like, what, 29 gigabytes of samples. It's just pure percussion. I know it doesn't have a piano as such, but come on, how many piano sample libraries are out there? Um, but it has everything else. And everything else, it, everything it does have is sampled beautifully to a very high quality with some extremely good, uh, gorgeous mic positions and every technique I feel you'll ever need. So I hope you have enjoyed this walkthrough and I guess review of Spitfire's Percussion Library by, I, I don't wanna butcher his name, Joby Bergs, but let's leave it there. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.